Okay, this video is how does neurovascular uncoupling cause brain damage? And this is part of my theory, the Peter Rogers MD theory of dementia. Okay, so I previously mentioned this concept in previous lectures, but I made a drawing of it for the first time. So that's why I'm giving this talk here. Um, under normal conditions, you'll have normal neurovascular coupling, meaning that glucose and oxygen delivery, I kind of jokingly abbreviated G-O-D, which obviously can mean something else, but in our case, it's often abbreviated O-G-D, oxygen glucose delivery, but glucose oxygen delivery. Okay, so that's basically blood flow. And that should be coupled, matched to the same level as MR. MR stands for uh, metabolic rate of the neurons. And these should always be about the same so that you have adequate glucose and oxygen for the neurons here and their metabolic rate. There's a lot of things that will decrease glucose and oxygen delivery. Here's just an example. If you overtreat hypertension, you end up with underperfusion, lack of blood supply, relative lack of blood supply to the brain, overtreated hypertension. A mouse equivalent, you know, by the Jack Delatory theory of brain perfusion as a cause, lack of brain perfusion as a cause of dementia. Okay, high fat diets will drop oxygen glucose delivery about 15, 20% to brain parenchyma. High sodium, vasoconstrictor, drops oxygen and glucose delivery. Chronic hypertension causes damage to the arterial wall over time, scarring, fibrosis, hypertrophy of the vascular smooth muscles in the arterial wall. The chronic diabetes also causes damage, thickening of the endothelial basement membrane. Aging causes decreased um, nitric oxide vasodilator production in the endothelial cells, for example. So all of these things decrease the ability to deliver glucose and oxygen to the neurons. If you've got cardiac problems, that'll uh, contribute as well to making things worse for uh, glucose and oxygen delivery. Atrial fibrillation, congestive heart failure, aortic regurgitation, aortic stenosis, atherosclerosis. Inhibitors of circa sarcoplasm, endoplasmic reticulum, calcium ATPase means you can't pump calcium out of the cytoplasm into the, um, the endoplasmic reticulum. And that's going to lead to a problem. It's going to end up being similar to a mitochondrial inhibitor and lead to a problem with energy production. Okay, It can also have a little bit of a, a ramping up excitotoxin effect as well. But we're just going to list it on this side of the column. So what I'm saying is it could also be listed over here. But for our purposes for now, we're going to list it over here. All right, uh, low potassium, low magnesium, which are both vasodilators. So when you're low on those things, you'll have less blood flow. Excessive iron, Fe, uh, can be an indicator of increased risk of oxidative stress. Excessive uh, peroxynitrite also will contribute to oxidative stress. So these are all things that will lower the glucose and oxygen delivery. So now you can see I've kept the metabolic rate at the same level as it was originally, but now we've dropped the glucose and oxygen delivery. So that will, we'll call this a moderate amount of uncoupling between the amount of uh, glucose oxygen delivery versus the metabolic rate of the neurons. And this will be something that you would expect the patient to have perhaps a slight subjective. They notice it, but no one else says they're just not quite at their best. You know, they're, they're dropping words, forgetting things, can't do stuff as normal and fast and quickly and smoothly as they usually would. Okay, so now we're going to take it in another direction, though. Now we're going to increase the metabolic rate of the neurons. So the metabolic rate of the neurons started out here as a baseline, and we're going to drive it up. And at the same time, we're going to keep the glucose and oxygen delivery down here low, because let's just assume we've got some of these problems happening, and now we're adding these problems. And you can see this gap. Uh, we call the gap the amount of uncoupling. There's a severe uncoupling, big gap between the amount of glucose and oxygen delivery to this neuron and the neuron's metabolic rate. And the wider this gap gets between here and down here, as, as indicated by this light blue line, the more likely these neurons are just going to say, hey, we can't function on this low of a glucose and oxygen delivery relative to our metabolic demands, our metabolic rate. So they just die. They go into program cell death, which is sort of a gradual cell death, a recycling, if you will. It's called apoptosis. Um, and that means that the chemicals and structures in the, or in the organelles will be recycled, let's say, absorbed by the macrophages, microglia, so to speak, and then used by other cells in the human body. So it's a gradual death. You don't see anything on a brain MRI. You don't see anything in pathology either, except for de decreased number of neurons. Okay, that's in comparison with a sudden cell death, which would be necrosis, lysis of the plasma membrane, and a lot of inflammatory fluid all over the place. You can point to it on a brain MRI. So anyways, you get it? 
This is normal. They're matched. The amount of glucose and oxygen delivery to the metabolic rate of the neurons. Here is a drop because of lack of glucose and oxygen delivery. And it may or may not cause neurons to die by apoptosis. But when this gap gets even bigger because you're simultaneously increasing the metabolic rate of these neurons um, due to stress, MFG, MSG, um, stress equivalent, sleep deprivation, caffeine, corticosteroid medications, stimulants, tobacco, amphetamine, ADHD meds, glyphosate's also an excitotoxin, uh, beta amyloid protein oligomers can push on the NMDA receptor and um, have a um, excitotoxin effect. Excitotoxin is another way of saying stimulant to increase the amount of metabolic rate in the neuron. So anyways, this is my theory. I think it's uh, a neat way to explain brain damage and of course, you know, the deletory theory, chronic uh, cerebral hyperperfusion, mouse equivalents, and there's a couple other theories. I talked about them recently, but I just wanted you to see this picture of it. I got one more slide here. It'll, it'll be, you know, just showing you um, a summary of it. So this is just my theory. Kind of jokingly, I, I call them my acronym, my mnemonic boast. Brain, oxygen, antioxidants, stimulants, and toxins. And I'm kind of boasting because I think it's funny. I can just figure this stuff out on my own rather than, you know, you look in the Ivy League textbooks and they're a joke and they just say some stupid stuff about Alzheimer's, which we, which we have talked about before. And Alzheimer's is kind of a joke. We talked about that before. There's no clear history question, physical exam, lab test, imaging test, or even autopsy test that can confidently, precisely diagnose it. And there's no treatment, so it's kind of a big joke. So anyways, um, oxygen and glucose deprivation, as we referred to a moment ago. Uh, having antioxidants also helps protect the neuron from oxidative stress. For example, stimulants ramping up the, uh, ramping up the metabolic rate, leading to a wider gap between oxygen and glucose delivery and the metabolic rate of the neuron, leading to increased risk of apoptosis. And then other things that are toxic to the neuron. We talked about this, like mitochondrial inhibitors, limiting the ability of that neuron to make energy which effectively widens the gap as well between its metabolic rate and um, its ability to deliver energy. So anyways, hope that was helpful.